Hey guys, and today we're going to look at a little bit of theory of movement, both global movement and joint movement. This is called three directional or three dimensional movement patterns. So whether you're looking quite small in an isolated movement pattern, how one joint works, or whether you're looking at global movement, we always want to be addressing our three planes of motion. These three planes of motion are sagittal, forwards and back, frontal or coronal, side to side, and transverse, which is our rotational motion. These three directional patterns happen in every single movement that we do. So even within walking or gait pattern, each one of our joints should go through these three planes of motion. If one of these planes of motion is missing or less, another plane will probably have to be larger so that we always stay within our, our sphere or bubble of movement. And if something's moving too much, something isn't moving enough, that's where we can set ourselves up for injury and non-optimal movement patterning. If we think about walking, walking in itself, although it looks like it's just a sagittal plane dominant motion coming forwards, we're actually working in all three planes of motion. So general leg movement might be sagittal, but as we transfer our weight from left to right, we also get frontal. And then if we're moving properly with our legs and arms, we should get transverse plane motion happening as well as the thorax rotates one way and the pelvis rotates the other way. So even with something that we perceive to be as simple as walking, we're still looking at three planes of motion. As a dancer, when you are creating your own exercise programs, it is essential that you address all three planes of motion within your movement patterning. Dancing is an omnidirectional movement or exercise form, so this needs to be represented within your training. You're then going to get the healthiest and more robust tissue as well. If we just continue training in one plane of motion all the time, that's the way that your tissues will get strong. And then you're in class and you're asking it to do something else, a big rotation or loaded to the side. The tissue is not going to be as robust, not as strong, and that's where you're going to end up again getting an injury, usually in your eccentric portion of the movement. So when you're doing your training, think about adding in all three directions. Okay, so what we want to look at, this is sagittal plane dominant motion. Comes in a forwards and backwards line. This is frontal plane motion, side to side. And this is transverse plane motion, rotating. So if we're gonna put this into a lunging drill, we then have sagittal plane forwards, sagittal plane backwards or posterior, frontal plane to the right, frontal left, Transverse, we can come forwards on the twist and we can come behind on the twist. Keeping my centered leg facing forwards. So transverse again, forwards, transverse, behind. So I'm gonna look at 3D arms, but still keeping a sagittal plane forward lunge. So I've got sagittal plane arms, then I can vary with frontal plane arms. Then I can vary again with transverse plane arms. And that's all with a sagittal plane lunge. I can do the same thing with a frontal plane lunge. So I start the lunge, add sagittal plane arms add frontal plane arms and they can go in either direction so that's one frontal plane that's another one feeds different information into the body transverse across and transverse back in again again both of those feed different information into both the knee hip and spine I hope you find this useful and get to apply it in your next set of exercises.